us today. At this time, we invite you to be in a posture of worship. Stand as you're able, and we're going to sing Joy to the World.
we've come to that point in our service where we're, we're going to bow our heads and bow our hearts to God at this time. Please join me. Precious Lord, we're still in that season of Advent where we are preparing, you are preparing our hearts. And we're, we're on a journey to come home to you. I ask you, Lord, to continue to work in our hearts, make them more like a child's heart, Lord, a heart that is open and trusting and loving and just seeking you, Lord. We thank you for this time as we prepare for your, your coming into the world, Emmanuel, God with us. And we just thank you, God, that you thought enough of us to send Jesus for us, for our redemption and our salvation. So, Lord, for those that will be journeying not only to the major, maybe for the first time, for those that are journeying home to be with family, we ask you, Lord, to continue to touch our hearts and mold them and make them more like you each and every day. We ask these things in Christ Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Our soul, our souls magnify the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God. For God has looked with favor on us, God's servants. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hunger with good things and sent the rich away empty. God of justice, God of peace, we open our hearts to you. Give us grace to be instruments of your righteousness. Give us courage to turn away from distractions and distortions and turn toward the home you have made, our making, and will complete through Christ. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light these candles, turning with, turning with courage toward the one who makes a home among us. Good morning. If some children would join me up here, I'd really appreciate it. There are some. Okay, good. Come on down. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Cobus. Hi. Yeah. Can you all scoot this way so I don't have to turn around behind me? Good morning. So, how many days until Christmas? Eight. Eight. Who is counting? Hope is counting. Cobus says he's counting too. Me too. You too, Emery? Eight. Eight days until Christmas. You are so right. Next Sunday, we're going to come on Christmas Eve, and it's going to be a really special service, something that we haven't done before here, and it's going to be really cool. Kendrick wants to know why the big white candle isn't lit yet. You know why? Because we're going to light it next Sunday on Christmas Eve. That candle is called Christ candle. It's the Christ candle. And that's the candle we'll light next week. And thank you for asking that question because I was just about to say that. Good job. So we will light our last candle on Christmas Eve to celebrate what? What is Christmas? The birth of Christ. Okay, good. Oh, yeah? Jesus' birthday? Yeah? Uh-huh. So Christmas is the birth of Jesus. So I'm going to need you guys to come next week because we might have a bit of a party. Okay? Yep. All right. So... Eight days, seven days until we come back for Christmas Eve, eight days on Christmas Day. But is it really about all of what we get? No. No, no it's not. What is it about? Jesus. Jesus and? Spending time with the family. Spending time with family. Good. And mom and dad. And your mom and dad. And it's about Jesus. You're right. It's about Jesus and Jesus being where? In our hearts. And we celebrate that he came to be with us, right? So this last week, these last eight days, I want you to think about every time you think about Monday morning and the presents under the tree and that you've been staring at some of them for a long time because they've been wrapped under the tree. I want you to think about not what you're getting, but what you're going to give, which is Jesus in your heart. And so you're going to give away Jesus, okay? I know you do. Okay? Do you think you guys can do that? Especially this last week of school when it's really hard. Yep. Okay. Let's pray together. Dear God, help us to remember what Christmas is all about. 
and how we can give instead of just get. Help us to remember your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job. All right, y'all can go to Sunday school. We have a few announcements as they head down the stairs. Um, first and foremost, if you have not found that registration pad that's in somewhere near you, in the row or table around you, please find that. Make sure you sign in on that. Check in on social media. If you are a first-time guest with us, I especially invite you to find the yellow card that's in the registration pad so that you may sign in on that. Give us some more information about you so that we can give you more information about us. Uh, a few other things going on this week. Uh, first and foremost is right after this service. We will have um, pack -a shack going on in the back. This is our last pack -a shack um, If you are curious about that and that whole situation, you can read uh, the article that was in the newsletter, the December newsletter, explaining why we are ending pack -Shack. Then this evening at 5.30, I said pack -a shack I mean Pack-A-Sack. <laughs> Pack-A-Shack is something different coming next month. Okay, so calling all chili chefs, calling all chili eaters, most importantly, Come tonight between 5.30 and 7.30 um, right here, Becker Hall. This is a youth fundraiser, and we will be, um, I've told that our champion from last year, Janet, is making a pot of her chili, but she claims that she only won because hers was closest to the door. <laughs> so I fixed that this year, and that may or may not be because I'm entering in one as well. I don't know yet, it depends on how long my nap is today. Um, but what we're gonna do, we, we have some muffin tins that we're gonna provide, but if you would also like to bring your muffin tin, we have special little bowls that will fit in those muffin tins. So you can get a sample of each one, and then at the end of the line, you can get a big bowl of chili that is being made in the kitchen, and that way you can sample all of them and then still go home full, okay? And then before you leave, you go back and vote with your dollars for your favorite one, and that's how we're going to crown our champion this year. And it won't be because you're by the door, Janet. <laughs> Just saying. Um, this is a youth fundraiser, so we do wish that everyone will come and enjoy the, the chili tonight and just fellowship with one another in the spirit of the season. Then at 8 o'clock, you can stick around and wait uh, for the debut of uh, the Arkansas Music Works Brass Band. They will be in the sanctuary at 8 p.m. This is a, a band that is brand new. This is their debut. They follow uh, English brass band style, so if you wish to enjoy some music of the season um, from them, please come at 8 or just stay, eat a late dinner and stay. That's fine. Then on Thursday, we have our um, service of hope, healing, and comfort on the longest night of the year, which is also the shortest day of the year. Um, this service we hold annually for those who just aren't finding the hope and joy in this season, or maybe you are, but could still use some healing and comfort. Um, so come and join us this Thursday. Now on Sunday, Christmas Eve, if you come at 9 o'clock or 9.30, the building will be locked, the lights will be off, and you will be sad. And I don't want anybody sad on Christmas Eve. Um, as I mentioned with the children, we are having three services, 1045 traditional in the sanctuary. There will be a brass quintet that, at that service. 530 here, in here in Becker Hall, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Shannon is equally excited. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, 7 o'clock, we'll have another traditional service. All three of those will have candlelight carols and communion. So if you come to one or the other, you'll still get the basic same things that you look for on Christmas Eve. And then, that's all I have to say. 
I know you're kind of shocked. Oh, I know. Hush. Okay. There is a lot going on this week. It is that time of year. There is more in your bulletin even, but now I'm going to actually ask Rob Whitesides to come and join us and give us a few words. Merry Christmas. <clears throat> My name's Rob Whitesides, <clears throat> and I'm a member of the Finance Committee. And some of y'all may remember, <clears throat> excuse me, last March, I came and talked to y'all about our 2017 budget and how the Finance Committee had decided that we needed to communicate more with the church members about our financial condition. And I think everybody sees every week we give a, a weekly report, and then <clears throat> in our uh, newsletters, there's also information provided. If you recall, in 2017, we were actually short, and we approved a budget that was short <clears throat> of pledges versus our expenses. Well, y'all's great gifts in stepping forward as of November the 30th, which are not the exact numbers on your sheet, we had an increase in our pledges and tithing so that church showed that at that time we had, ple we had exceeded our pledges by $10,000. And we spent $28,600 less than projected. Part of that was due to reduction of staff and amongst other things. 2017 will be a pretty good year with our, for our, financially for our church do the increased number of pledges and offerings during the year. <clears throat> we need to talk about 2018. Y'all remember in October, uh, everyone was given one of these. And our pledges for 2018 at the end of November was that we had 134 pledges for $345,000. In 2017, we had 200 pledges for $474,000. So we're 66 fewer pledges and about $129,000 less pledged than what we had for 2017. Our projected expenses for 2018 has also been lowered $71,000 from our 2017 expenses. But these numbers show that we're still over $100,000 short of meeting our expenses. My prayer is, is that the lack of the number of pledges and is due to church members, church family, forgot to turn these in. And I'm one of them. <laughs> you know, but my excuse is that I was gone from, I don't know, mid, yeah, almost, uh, and got back the week of Thanksgiving. And I didn't realize that I had forgotten to turn this in until Patsy at the Finance Committee Tuesday night said, where's yours? <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm hoping that there's other people like the idiot Whitesides that forgets to turn their things in. But we need your help again. Uh, the Finance Committee works real hard to come up with a budget but just like your family budget, it's based on our income of what we can spend. But, you know, we've got to keep the lights on, and we've got to do what God calls us to do. Uh, you know, 
making a pledge is a personal relationship between you and God as you're pledging to give to him. First United Methodist Church of Bella Vista is the vessel that, you, that receives your offering or tithe to do God's work. You know, our church is in Christ's hands to provide the resources to help in our mission but in our mission bodies reach out to locally and to the world to help all those in need of God's help. So please pray and think about what you can do to help God work his marvelous, wonderful miracles. We got finance committee members that are standing around that have pledge cards and if you they'll be on the back when you leave. If you're like me and forgot or you didn't have it, but this this I've got now, but after I do the third service, I gotta put it into the church office. <clears throat> you know, you don't have to be a member to make a pledge. God takes money from anybody. <laughs> so think and pray about it. And I want to thank you and God bless each and every one of you. And as we've been talking about our home, this will allow us to stay home and say happy birthday to Jesus by making a pledge or increasing your tithe. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. This time, I invite you to stand and greet one another. Find a finance committee member if you need to, um, and just say hello and good morning.
Thank you, praise team. Y'all are a good voice this morning. It sounds really, really good. We come together each week to worship God with us and to share the joys and the concerns of our church family. And we have joys and we have concerns. We had a birth in our midst. Uh, there's a red rose uh, in the sanctuary for a new grand, a great grandbaby of the hills, Florence and Charlie. And so if you know them and uh, uh, give, them, uh, give them some extra um, great, uh, great joy in your family um, celebrations. So we have new ones in our midst. We have those who have been ill and are doing better, and we're thankful for those who have left the hospital. Uh, maybe they're in rehab, maybe they're at home, but uh, we're thankful that Ronnie Table Taylor, Pat Pershing, Pat Brannon, and Eunice Albers are all um, doing better and have um, uh, moved out of the hospital for further recuperation. If you know Miss Eunice, uh, she worships in traditional service, been a member of this church for 28 years. She and her two daughters have made a family decision that um, because her health has gotten worse recently that she, um, she is going to go from Highlands, where she is as of this moment, to move to Iowa to be close to family. And that's a hard thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. So. Um, so uh, if, you, if you are able to go see Miss Eunice in Highlands in the next week or so, um, she should be there for a while. So we invite you to do that. Also, if you know Rose Taylor, we heard from her mother-in-law this morning that she, uh, the recent scan shows that uh, there is no cancer. Um, she is home recuperating and she's got a lot of healing to do, but we are thankful and praise the Lord for the fact that, that the cancer is gone. So, um, so lift her in prayers as well. Amen. Amen. I agree. As we go through this Christmas week, we invite you to lift all of all churches in your prayers that they may glorify the Lord and that um, those who are not part of a church family will be drawn to be a part of one, but especially this week in Bella Vista, lift the Institute of Music, Worship, and the Arts in your prayers. Doug? Yeah. They, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Oh, this morning. Thank you for letting us know about that. I appreciate that, Doug. So if you couldn't, if you couldn't hear him, Jim and LaVon Schmidt are relocating to Oklahoma. And so uh, we didn't get to hug them, um, but, uh, but uh, send them wishes, uh, maybe a card. or um, and, and I'm hoping maybe they'll let us know what their new address will be. So. It'll forward. Okay. Thanks, Doug. We appreciate that. And now let us join together in prayer. God of mercy, God of grace, God of presence with us. You make a home with us on this earth. And you call each and every one of us, not those just here, but those out in the community as well, to be a part of your family. You call us, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our backgrounds, regardless of our heritage, as the Bible says, Jew and Gentile, male and female, old and young, slave and free, all are called to be a part of your family. None are left behind. Lord, forgive us when we do not extend that same unconditional love to others. When we shut out those who are not like us for one reason or another. When we judge and we think we are better than others and they are worse than, than us and we are right and they are wrong, Lord, forgive us because that is not what your love is all about. Help us instead, Lord, to welcome all into your family. 
to welcome the homeless, to welcome the oppressed, to welcome the poor, to welcome all and extend that boundless love to all those we meet. Lord, we ask for the gift of your unconditional love that knows no bounds. For the families of those who have passed away this week, part of our church families, we've had two that have passed away, Gerald Hickey and Oscar Valdez. We pray that their families will find peace in the assurance of knowing that they are now resting in your eternal love. That kind of love that spans time and circumstances that comes from you. Lord, we give you thanks for the healing love for those who have faced struggles in this path, health struggles in this past week. And thank you for Eunice Albers and Charlene Marshall, Pat Brannon and Pat Pershing, who are doing better. And we also lift to you this morning those who are facing health concerns in the coming week, especially Diane Cox, Diane Verville, Marcy Musa, Amy Fulton and Carol Boyd. And Lord, we ask for your travel mercies on all who will be traveling within the coming week. Lord, it is in the thanksgiving and praise of your unconditional and boundless love that we raise these prayers to you this morning. Not only the ones that are spoken, but also the ones that are resting on our hearts and we would, we lift those as well, heavenward to you at this moment. And Lord, we lift our voices together as one body, one spirit, as we join to say the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you, Brenda. In this fourth week of our Advent sermon series, Coming Home, we will hear how God makes this world a home. The first week, we heard from the prophet Isaiah, who shared that God's people had sinned and felt estranged from God. They were looking for a sign that God had not abandoned them. They were looking for God to re-enter their lives. We were encouraged to come down home. And we explored a bit of what that means, coming down home. The second week, we learned that home is where we meet. We turned to the psalmist who showed us that God's people had returned to God and God had provided for God's people in the past and would continue to do so in the future. You were given the invitation to meet others wherever they were and to meet Jesus there too. Of course, that invitation still applies. <laughs> you can continue to do that. Last week, we heard how joy was our true home. We heard the entire narrative of the birth of Jesus and we were reminded that God wants us to be joyful in God, even if we can't be joyful in much else in the world. We are to take joy in God's presence in us and our lives. Which brings us to this week, 
God makes this world a home. Our scripture for today is often called Mary's Song, or the Magnificat. There have been several composers through the ages that have set this scripture, these verses, in beautiful lyrics, beautiful musical settings. And then composers or authors and poets have also set these words in prose and poetry. And I think sometimes we get distracted by the beauty of those settings and we miss something. In my research of this text this week, I found that there is some raw, revolutionary words here. I invite you to to read along as I read and to hear these words in a different way this morning. Mary said, With all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and Abraham's descendants forever. Let us give thanks for the gift of God's word. Amen. Revolutionary. Mary's song is revolutionary. Indeed, many commentaries and scholars describe these verses as just that, revolutionary. There is a before this event time period, the event, the revolution, and then an after the revolution time period. In history, whenever we discuss a revolution, you have a before and an after. And things are a bit different in the after. For instance, the American Revolution, you have before the American Revolution, when we were governed by a king across the pond in England, and then after, when we were governed by Congress and a president and a constitution. There's a before and an after. Mary's song serves as the turning point in history, the acknowledgement that the world is about to change and undergo a revolution so complete, so upside down, that it won't know what to do. The world won't know what to do. Indeed, that is what Jesus did. He made the world his home, God's home, Emmanuel, God with us. And in the process, turned the world upside down. Listen, the mighty one, God has done great things for me, Mary, a lowly servant, a slave girl. He has brought down the powerful and lifted the lowly, filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. And a world at that time, and let's face it, today, when... We honor the powerful, the rich, and the, quote, haves. God revolutionizes the world by sending his son as a baby. The most helpless of helpless. A baby. 
a tiny, imperceptible ripple into the fabric of the world, of society. Someone who has no power, no ability to even care for itself, born to a teenager and her carpenter fiancé, someone who has literally nothing. Born in a cave, surrounded by animals, literally placed in a feeding trough. The savior of the world. Whose birth is first announced to shepherds. More lowly, impoverished, marginalized people revolutionary. If Jesus' birth is revolutionary, then Mary's song is the charter of that birth. It is the document we have that proclaims what is to happen, that the revolution is coming and we need to be ready. So are we? Are we ready for this birth? Are we ready to raise the lowly while toppling the mighty? Are we ready to speak injustices aloud? Are we ready to become servants rather than rulers? Are we ready to tell the powerful to be humble? Are we ready for the revolution in our hearts that is Jesus Christ? Are we ready to see the world as Jesus sees it, full of love and opportunity? If we would just seek God first and not the ways of the world. You see, that is what this birth is about. That is what we come seeking week after week in this space. Not just in this season of Advent. We seek to not be like the rest of the world. We are called to be different to continue the revolution, to do what we can to make this a place where Jesus has a home always and forever. We just prayed, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Do we mean it? Are we really ready? The garlands are hung, the trees are decorated, the presents are wrapped, maybe. The presents are purchased, maybe. The lights are up, the carols are being sung, the candy and the cookies are ready to be made and eaten. But what happens if we aren't ready? Does Christmas happen anyway? Yes. December 25th will come and go, whether or not we are ready for it. Whether or not we have trees up and decorated. Whether or not we have presents to unwrap or wrap. Whether or not we have candy and cookies to fill our bellies. December 25th will come and go. Christmas Day will happen. But are we ready? Are we ready for Jesus' birth in our hearts? How do we even prepare for someone so revolutionary, so amazing, that we can't even fully put into words what he means in our lives? And I have to ask, if, if we're ready with all the trappings of Christmas, but not the birth of Jesus in our hearts, what happens? What are we truly ready for, friends? It's time for us to turn the world upside down with Jesus. It's time to continue the revolution he started some 2,000 years ago, in a cave, no less. 
It's time, friends, to call Jesus our Savior, to truly honor and lift him up as the revolutionary he is. It's time to declare his lordship in this world, to remember that he came as a baby in order to save the world as a young man. He was hated, despised, and hung, only to see God's love turn the world upside down by raising him from the dead. For us. For you and me, for those we love. What other gift can we possibly anticipate this Christmas that could bring us so much joy, love, and fulfillment? To be a true revolutionary, Jesus has to revolutionize each one of us, every single one of us every single one of our hearts in a way that we can no longer ignore the poor of the world, the people the Gospel of Luke tells us that Jesus came for. The meek, the lowly, the impoverished, the hated, the marginalized, the ones who don't have a voice at the table. These are who felt the immediate revolutionary spirit of Jesus. not the religious, not the regular temple goers and sacrificers. They didn't have the need like the poor did. That raw, burning need of a Savior. Do you Is your life so devoted to the gift of his love that your entire worldview has changed? That is what Christmas is all about, brothers and sisters. The revolutionary power of Jesus and celebrating his arrival in this world, in our hearts, to make its home as we prepare for the celebration this week. It is a celebration. It's a party. I invite you to prepare more than your homes and bellies. I invite you to prepare your hearts. Let us pray. Glorious God, We fall on our knees in your majesty, in wonder and awe at this gift of your Son. That you so loved us, that you came to save us, even me. Lord, as we anticipate your birth again, as we prepare our hearts, inspire us, encourage us, prod us to continue your revolution, to be the people of you, to share your love in only the way we know how. Lord, help us to anticipate your birth and to prepare our hearts for your coming. It is in your Son's name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite our hosts to come forward and to receive our morning offering as we do.
Amen. Amen. Indeed, we bring offerings. We bring offerings of all kinds here at the altar. This week, you're, you've been given your invitation to prepare your hearts and to be ready to be a revolutionary, to welcome Jesus to this world. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing Welcome to Our World.
how will we welcome the babe to our world? It's up to us. Every single one of us. So do you love God? Yes. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Do you love the Holy Spirit? Yes. And do you know that God loves you? Yes. Then go forth, brothers and sisters, and prepare a place for God in this world. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.